This video will cover how to set up your FL level sensor for the first time. When choosing an installation location for the FL level sensor, it is important to consider the recommendations listed in the back of the brochure, making sure you are away from any walls or other obstructions that may be within the tank. When you first give power to the FL level sensor, you'll be greeted with the initial settings menu. Here, you can select whether you need NPN or PNP, and set the probe length designated by either the part number that you have received, or if you had cut the probe within at least plus or minus five millimeters of the actual length. Finally, you can set your units as either percent or millimeters of the probe in the liquid. Once your initial settings are entered, it's time to calibrate the FL to the liquid. Start by holding mode to enter the basic settings menu. Tap mode to cycle through all the different menu options. When you see end, use the arrow key to cycle to EF or extended functions. Cal will be the first menu option you see. Hold the down arrow key once 150 millimeters of the probe is free of the liquid. Set will flash indicating a proper calibration has been done and you can hold mode to go back into the main display screen. Adjusting the installation location of the FL may be necessary if when performing a calibration, you receive an ERCL error or calibration error as you can see on the screen. Just follow those instructions we talked about at the beginning to give yourself the best chance of performing a proper calibration. Our next recommendation is to perform a zero shift. To do this, you want to maintain stability on the main display screen. Place just the tip of the probe into the liquid and hold the up button until ZERO flashes on the screen. This will be a successful zero shift and now the tip of the probe will be calibrated for zero millimeters. Now that you've successfully calibrated and zero shifted the FL, it's time to confirm that we have good stability. To do this on the main display, you're going to hold the down button for two seconds or more until ST and a number or a digit is displayed. 9 to 10 is very stable and that means you performed everything correctly. Now that the FL is successfully calibrated to the liquid it's trying to detect, we can move on to the output methods that will tell your system the specific level that your tank is at. The most common method would be to use an analog 4 to 20 milliamp output. To set this up, make sure you are using the white wire as your analog wire. Then, you'll just need to go into the basic settings, cycle through all the different menu items until you get to end, cycle over to EF for extended functions, and then cycle through past STB until you see ASP. ASP is going to be your 4 milliamp signal, and A. EP, which will be just after that, will be your 20 milliamp signal. You may scale these however you'd like, but by default, ASP or your 4 milliamp signal will be set to 0, and AEP, your 20 milliamp signal, will be set to the entire length of the probe. One of the methods for a discrete output is called hysteresis mode. In hysteresis mode, you have an SP or a set point and an RP or a reset point. For hysteresis normally open or HNO, your output will turn on at the SP level or set point. For hysteresis normally closed or HNC, your output will turn on at the reset point or RP. To see which detection mode you're currently in, go through your basic settings, past your extended functions until you see OU1, and that will tell you if you're in HNO or HNC. To then set your SP and your RP, you're going to go into the basic settings until you see SP1, set your level for SP1, then go into your RP1 and set your level for your RP1. So now I have set my SP1 as 100 and my RP1 as 15.
So as we go through this example, we see that since we're above 100, our output is on. And as that number drops all the way to our RP1 level of 15, our output would then turn off. And that output will not turn back on until we hit that SP1 or set point one level again, right here. The other discrete output detection mode that we have is window mode. In this detection mode, you need to set an FH or upper limit and an FL or lower limit. Once your upper and your lower limit are defined, if you're in window normally open, your output will turn on in between this lower and upper limit. In window normally closed, your output will turn on outside of your lower and upper limit. Here you can see I'm just going to be checking whether I'm in window normally open or normally closed. To do this, it's just going to be the same process as you would check for hysteresis normally open and closed. Here I'm in window normally open, and now we can start setting our upper and lower limit. We can see here that FH1 represents our upper limit and FL1 represents our lower limit. So I set an upper limit of 130 millimeters and a lower limit of 80 millimeters. So now as I stay between 130 and 80, my output will stay on. As soon as I go outside of those limits, my output would then turn off. Thank you as always for watching. If you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to your local product specialist. Otherwise, you can give tech support a call, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.